Glory be to God in the highest height, and we want to bless the name of the Lord for his faithfulness, for his righteousness. And last week we discussed about the mystery of vision. And um, somebody was telling me, he said that the challenge of many nations, particularly the African nations, are people that are vying for political offices, leadership roles, they don't have a plan. They are doing it for their ego or for the gains that they will get there. Only very few people are ready for the office they are vying for. And now, if you, are, if you don't have a vision of the office you are going to, of course, when you get there, you will squander the resources available for wrong reasons. You will take up wrong projects, you know. And I remember when I, when I made up my mind I was going to get married, I sat down and I told myself what my marriage would be like. And this is my 21st year of marriage. I'm living the vision. When I met my wife, we sat down together and we agreed what our marriage would be like. And it was very easy for us to operate together. And this week, remember the conversion just started? And um, we, this week we want to talk about the mystery of love. The mystery of love. Father, we thank you for your love for us. The scriptures say that you love us when we are not lovable. We are yet sinners when you started loving us. Some of us, like you said concerning Isaac, uh, Jacob, you said you love him even when he was in his mother's womb. You told Jeremiah, before I formed your mother, so I already planned for you. What a God you are. Father, we thank you. Please, this week, the week of convention, we ask that you grant us perfect liberty. And as we discuss the mystery of love, please be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, friends, you know, this is pre-recorded for the whole week. So we're going to talk about the mystery of love for the whole week. Now, the first thing is that our text is John chapter 3, 15 and 16. And I'm going to read that to you. The Bible says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. What is the result of the love that he gave his only begotten son? Why did he give his son? For that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, God has a vision before he gave his son. The vision played out. He made it plain to everyone. I'm giving you this for this purpose. He had been seeing it for years before the sun came. The vision was clear. And the timing was also very apt. Praise the Lord. And that's something about love. Now, the first thing we want to talk about love is salvation. Now, the thing about love is that you, you are out to invest in the other person. It's mutual. Like if it's a relationship of parents, of parents to children, husband to wife, friend to friend. Salvation. You want to be out. But the Bible says concerning David and Jonathan. Because of their relationship, Jonathan was willing to sacrifice everything, even his own being the, him being the king for David's sake. That's salvation. Salvation will always come into play. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13. If you read from verse 1 to 6, he says that no matter what you have without love is useless. No matter what you can do without love doesn't make sense. And he said, love delivered all things. Love, you know, love endured all things. Love does not, is not powerful. Love does not seek his own. Love is always about salvation. And that's why when God loved the world, he gave us for our salvation. And friends, if your love is not bringing salvation to the other person, it's not love. It could be infatuation. It could be business. Remember that. And we will continue on that note. Put flesh to your love. Let your love bring salvation to somebody, to something. See you soon.